Welcome to A Closer Look. I'm Melissa Neely. It's been almost a year since 48-year-old Candy Newsom and her 16-year-old daughter, Christina Michael Newsom, were found murdered in their Lucasville, Ohio home. Family members say it's been a struggle to deal with their tragic loss. I spoke with Candy's father and Michael's grandfather, Roy Johnson, in his Lucasville home about the case and how the family is managing after their tragic loss. This area is no stranger to mysterious unsolved murders. Candy and Michael were gunned down just months before in January and not far from where eight members of the Roden family were murdered in April of 2016. And like the Roden murders, people who knew the victims are also suspected in the Newsom murders. While investigators say the cases are not related, both tragedies have left behind devastated family members. Somebody, somebody either a robbery or revenge for some reason, came in the back door probably between probably between 12 and 2 I would say wait it looks out and came into the back bedroom and using the rifle uh, shot her shot her and shot her two or three times and Michael in her bedroom has probably heard it and run for the front door and they come in the hallway and shot her you know he, they said whoever it was a pretty good shot we came in, Elsie and I came in that night at five minutes after 11. We'd been to uh, Cider Downs um, Casino up in Columbus. We just came in at five minutes after 11. We came by there, and I don't think there was any lights on. Just one in her bedroom. Just one in her bedroom was on, and no cars besides her truck, car, and truck. That was all that was there. People crossed the road said they thought... They heard an old pickup, and my son Keith out there, he heard noises, uh, but he wasn't sure there was a gunshot or whatever. He said he should have went down there. He said, I probably got killed, but I should have went down. And uh, he said that he can tell, he can tell from this, just the sound of it, that this was an old Ford pickup. He said, I could tell it was an old Ford pickup, and he heard two car doors slam. And they, they went down the road. And um, I know their purses are missing. I don't know whether it's robbery or where, what it was. We don't know. It could have been somebody just mad at her, angry at him. Candy was the type of person that told you how she felt. You know? So yeah. do you think she made somebody mad? And that's well, I'd say she did. Yeah. Candy was the type of person that would give her last bite of her meal if she was hungry. Uh, people up the road up here, their kids couldn't... They weren't going to have a Christmas, so she went out and bought all the clothes and toys and stuff and gave it to them. Another girl, a good friend of Michael, every year she bought her school clothes and stuff. And Johnson says his family hasn't lost hope in finding out who murdered Candy and Michael. They have several suspects, but uh, they really don't. They're crossing all their T's and dotting all their I's to make sure that if they ever have to go to court that they can prove it, you know. And since there was no witnesses and a lot of, you know, rumors going around, a lot of hearsay. Um, and of course, the detectives have, you know, many other cases they're working on with different stuff, you know. The first two or three months, they worked diligently on this. And I guess now, you know, they have to come up with, you know, new ideas or, or new rumors or something to check out. So, and so with with um, no fingerprints, because many people have been in her house, uh, no witnesses, um, it's, it's, it's a blank. It's, you draw a blank. Roy Johnson and his family say that despite the false leads given to police, they are still keeping the reward available for anyone who might have a tip that could lead to the answers they've been looking for this past year. With a closer look, I'm Melissa Neely for 700 WLW.